Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about first off the upcoming spring of 2021 and then also our upcoming severe weather season as well. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting store in the description and in the pinned comment down below and then also our very awesome Patreon page in the same location. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming severe weather season is going to go for 2021? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, first things first, we're taking a look at January of 2021, the rest of the outlook here, according to our CFS monthly model. Uh, and you, as you can see, we're expecting a cold east, basically, for the final half of January, according to this model, and also according to me, actually, I do believe that will be the case. As we head into February, though, uh, it does have more cold setup over the, the western United States there, and then kind of that southeast ridge coming in. The models have been calling for this month in and month out, but really it's never really come through. So I am pretty skeptical of this, uh, considering we have been expecting that to happen. It just never really occurs. Uh, but there is also that chance that it does occur, and it would make sense if it did. And now what we're going to do, as we just took kind of like a little bit of a glimpse at the wintertime, we're finally going to head into the spring months. We're going to head into March April and May, take a look at what those temperature anomalies could look like. This is our first time talking about the spring of 2021 this year. And then we're going to get into kind of the precipitation monthly forecast and even talk about our severe weather season as well, which I do expect will be above average. I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later on. Now, as of right now, the models do think that March could be a cold month, especially for the central and eastern United States. I've always said that March could either be a winter month or a spring month, depending on how it goes. If we do see above normal temperatures in March, they are actually pretty warm. Uh, but if we see those below normal temperatures head in, it is cold enough to create some snow, which makes it just feel like an extension of winter. A below average temperature, March kind of feels like an average February or an average January. Uh, so it can be an extension of winter there if those types of things occur. As of right now, it does look like that might be the case. I do think with this current setup, we could have some severe weather, especially there for the Gulf states. As you can see, we have below normal temperatures to the north. So they will be even further colder than what they typically are and then we even have some yellow showing up there for the southern regions of those southeast and gulf states and that's going to be even warmer than what is normal so this those differentials between the two will be even more extreme than what is typical and that is what typically would lead to above average severe weather so i think march could feature some gulf severe weather activity uh, outside of that, I don't think that the Gulf is going to have too much of an above average severe weather year. I think it's more of our traditional tornado alley, actually. So Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, even further north in some cases. I think our more traditional classic tornado alley is going to be the more active one moving forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards that temperature anomalies for April and then even May. And then we're going to get into our precipitation forecast as well to make sure there's going to be precipitation in those areas and then again we're going to talk a little bit more about the severe weather uh, talking about the La Nina and how it's going to affect that. Now by the time we reach April you can see that we have a big pattern flip that occurs here. We see warmth there for the Gulf states a lot of the central United States as well. What I think this is going to uh, provide is I think this is going to provide frequent cold fronts uh, there for Oklahoma and Texas, and I think that that could lead to above average severe weather, especially there for the month of April, uh, but even those areas that are a little bit warmer than normal, uh, we could see frequent warm-ups and then cool-downs come back through. That's, you know, very common for April time frame uh, for Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri. I think that's what those could feature. So this current temperature outlook or setup here, if this was to occur exactly the way this model is saying, I think would feature above average severe weather, certainly. Uh, and the La Nina definitely has something to say about the severe weather as well. Again, that is coming up in a moment. And by the time we reach May of 2021, which we actually have to use a different website to actually get this, uh, we can see a big warm-up occurs and we actually get warmer and warmer as we head towards the summer. And I don't just mean warmer, I mean warmer than normal for May. So this is even warmer than what would be typical. Uh, so that's going to be something we're going to need to take a look at once we get there. Uh, here's the precipitation forecast. We're starting out for January. As you can see, it doesn't think there will be as many storms there for the Gulf states in the southeast. I disagree. I think we're going to head back into a southern slider storm track. I think a lot of the southeast could feature even more snowfall than what they've even seen. 
uh, so far in the second half of January. I think you can pretty much slide everything a bit further south than what this is showing, in my opinion, as we head towards February. It certainly thinks we're in a southern slider storm track, but remember, it has the southeast ridge there. This would feature a lot of snow for the Ohio Valley in the northeast if this was to occur this way, uh, and also the Great Lakes in the upper Midwest, but especially the Ohio Valley and the northeast. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at those spring months on their precipitation forecast and take a look if there's going to be enough precipitation available for these severe weather events to occur. All right, now here we are taking a look at March of 2021, and as you can see, plenty of precipitation down there for portions of the Gulf states and Texas as well, uh, which kind of is a Gulf state, kind of not. I, I don't consider it a Gulf state at all. Uh, we can see that, well, if you remember, this is the month where I said probably the Gulf states in the southeast would feature some severe weather. They're, they're also going to be seeing above average precipitation. That's a recipe for some severe weather to set up during the month of March. As we head towards April, remember, I said frequent cold fronts possible for Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. They have well above normal precipitation expected according to this model. Slightly above normal precipitation expected further north. I think this would be a big severe weather month compared to normal uh, if it was to occur that way. And then even as we head towards May, you can see we get a little bit drier down there for the south central United States with more moisture up to the, I guess, upper Midwest and then Ohio Valley and the southeast, which could feature some severe weather in a little bit more of the northern traditional tornado alley and then even uh, kind of our new tornado alley, which is the southeast and the Gulf states. Uh, and as we head towards June, you can see it kind of flips and we get more precipitation down there for the south central United States. So they have one dry month in the month of May, but then it gets kind of moist again. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our La Nina and we're going to talk about how that will impact the severe weather season. We're even going to take a little bit of a look back at 2020 and see what happened with that severe weather season and show you guys why I think we will for sure have a bigger tornado and severe weather season than we did last year. Even going to have a hand-drawn map for my kind of preliminary severe weather outlook at the very end of this video, so you're not going to want to miss that. All right, so now we're taking a look at our sea surface temperature anomalies. As you can see, this was on January 12th, which is just yesterday. We still have a moderate La Nina around. It is slowly weakening, but I do think that throughout the spring months, we will still be dealing with a La Nina for sure. So we're going to need to talk about what the impacts of that would be. Uh, and here's an excellent map from NOAAClimate.gov. Uh, and this is March through May. So March through May, which is basically the time frame we've talked about throughout this video. On the left is the El Nino, and then on the right is the La Nina, and then on the bottom is hailstorms, and on the on the top is tornadoes. So as you can see on the left side, the oranges is indicating below average of those values. So in the oranges, we expect below average tornadoes in an El Nino, so pretty much both of our tornado alleys, except for maybe the extreme southeast. And then for hailstorms, we actually see well below average hailstorms in El Ninos. But in La Niñas, which remember, we're in a La Nina and we're probably going to be in an, a La Nina at least through May. Uh, you can see we expect above average tornadoes there in those blues. So Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, uh, even some of the Gulf states as well. But the northern portions, and we see below average tornadoes actually in kind of that new uh, tornado alley, which is mostly the Gulf states and the southern portions of those. So I think we could have a more traditional tornado year. First off, because of the temperature anomalies. Second off, because of this here that we have a La Nina. But it's mostly the hail that is uh, kind of most different here. As you can see on the bottom right, look at how dark those are. We see much more hail in those traditional areas. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, in La Nina's compared to El Nino's. So I definitely think we're taking a look at an above average uh, tornado and severe weather year. Let's take a look at what those temperature anomalies looked like in the middle, the very heart of severe weather season last year. And as you can see, we had an El Nino, very orange shades there for our Enso region. And that's why I think we had below average severe weather. So let's get right into that hand-drawn map I told you guys about for 2021, the spring forecast severe weather. This is very preliminary. I'm going to update this some, uh, probably like five or six times before we even get to March. I'm going to be talking about severe weather more and more as we get closer to the beginning of March. Also, I think I'm going to make a spring forecast at the end of this month and then also at the end of February. So I'm going to make two 
spring forecast, one preliminary, and then one official forecast. So here it is. I think in the oranges, we could feature some slightly above average severe weather, or I guess a slight chance at above average severe weather. But especially in that red shade, I definitely think we're going to be taking a look at above average hail, above average tornadoes, and overall just above average severe weather within that red shade. Again, our traditional tornado alley. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that snowstorm that is upcoming this weekend will occur? And Cloudwatcher said, I think the snowstorm will end up happening, and I do too. I just don't know the intensity. It could it could range anywhere from a minor snowstorm to a moderate snowstorm to even possibly a major snowstorm. We're going to really need to watch that one closely. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LaPan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, Mark J, and Luke Falego. If you would like to be on this Patreon end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.